The college football playoff field is expanding to 12. It is final. It is done. The university presidents have told the commissioners this is being done. We are moving to 12, period. And they are rolling along with the plan that Greg Sankey and Bob Bowlesby and Craig Thompson and Jack Schwarbrick all decided on that they all came to terms with the 12-team format that has six automatic qualifiers, eh, uh, which is the six highest-rated conference champions, and then six at-large bids. Now, we kind of assumed or thought at some point that, uh, you know, we would get to a part where uh, all of the all of these conferences would be in a lot of trouble. Because why would the Big Ten, why would the SEC, if they're expanding, they're bringing in these huge, huge brand names, why would they ever sign on to anything that has automatic qualifiers? Well, we sometimes forget that the commissioners are not the end-all, be-all when it comes to this. The university presidents are the ones that are in charge of this. And they are the ones that decided we're going to have the six highest-rated conference champions. There are ten conferences you could reasonably go to a format that has all 10 conference champions and then six wild cards to move to 16. There's no reason to do that because typically there's about four of these conference champions uh, out of the 10 that probably don't deserve to be anywhere near a playoff, but that is why they are keeping the bowl games in lockstep, right? Everything's going the same along with that. But as far as the university presidents go, Mark Keenum, the president of the univer- excuse me, of Mississippi State University, uh, he's the one that was basically at the forefront of this. He was the speaker. He was the public voice for this. And he said, we were going to get this done. Part of the reason, now he didn't say this publicly, but they're leaving a ton of money on the table. Uh, Bob Thompson, former Fox Sports president, has been on Twitter saying he thinks that once this thing goes to market, they're going to get about $2.2 billion annually for these 11 games. That is absurd money. Uh, But they are going to get a ton of money for it. That is one thing. So obviously they want this thing done by 2024. We'll see if they can get it done. Uh, 2025 probably seems more reasonable because they had already come to, they had already agreed to contracts with the sites in 2025 and 2026, right? That's January 20. So the 2024 season, 2025 season. Uh, they had already come to contracts with different sites, and that would be Atlanta and Miami. And it's kind of tough to move that stuff around because you're going to have to push this thing back further into January, it appears. We'll see. But uh, very, very interesting how they're doing this. Uh, the, the reason why the university presidents would want this done and why they would want six uh, automatic conference champions in this thing is because uh, they are looking to slow down expansion. I don't think that the university presidents really want to keep this thing going. Uh, Just to guess on this, but that's certainly what it looks like. They want to give everybody a shot at the table. They want, and and of course, you're also trying to avoid lawsuits, right? That's another big part of this. You got to avoid uh, getting taken to uh, court over this for, for not allowing access, right? So we'll see. What ends up happening? Uh, the other question here, uh, you know, we talked about the market value being two point two billion dollars. The other part of this is, can Fox get involved before twenty twenty six? We brought this on last week when we talked about uh, the show on Thursday. The idea is that uh, if you're ESPN and you want Oklahoma and Texas to come on in earlier, and you're trying to negotiate with CBS and you're trying to negotiate with Fox over getting the SEC out of their deal early and the Big 12 wants their stuff done quicker and blah, blah. Everybody wants something. So you're working on deals. Well, an ESPN property that Fox would really like to be a part of right now is that college football playoff. If you end up having a ton more games before the end of the contract, you might could maybe swap a few things around and let Fox get involved with this thing before. Right now, obviously, if you're ESPN, you don't want to give up the exclusivity. You probably keep the national championship, all that. But the other games will get a ton of viewers as well. So that's why that would go along. Let's uh, let's jump over here. Ross Dellinger uh, talked about it quite a bit, and he great article over at Sports Illustrated. 
Uh, he said the 12 team format, same model proposed 15 months ago by three commissioners and Swarbrick. Uh, they were part of a CFP working group that spent two years creating the expansion proposal. The model grants automatic bids to the six highest ranked conference champions, gives first round buys to the highest ranked four champions, and completes the field with six at large selections. First round games between seeds five through 12 are expected to be played on campus or at a location designated by the, uh, by the better seed. A rotation of six bowls will host quarterfinals and semifinals. Uh, and, of course, you can go and check out the model here over on Ross's Twitter page. Uh, and it goes through. I'm not going to read all of it, but it's it's interesting. The four highest-ranked conference champions assigned to quarterfinal games in bowls, the opponent from first-round game winners, will be assigned by the selection committee based on the bracket. The four highest-rated conference champions are going to get the buys. So if you win a conference championship, you are going to get a buy. Which means that last year, Georgia would have had to have played... In week one, they would have hosted a playoff game. And then they would have had to go, and we'll we'll bring this up over at CBS Sports. Uh, they have what a 12-team field would have looked like in each of the last eight seasons. That is all the different years of the college football playoff. Very interesting to go and look because Georgia, if they had beaten Pitt last year, which I would assume they would, then they would have to go and play Baylor before they would go and play Alabama which they would not have met in the national title game based on this, right? So the seeding will be different. Um, when you look at, you know, 2020, you would have gotten Indiana and Iowa State and Coastal Carolina in the college football playoff. Like, that is huge for those brands. Uh, you move to 2019, Memphis, Utah, Penn State, Wisconsin, Baylor in there again. Uh, you move to 2018, Penn State, LSU, Florida at the bottom, Washington, UCF, Michigan, Georgia, Notre Dame, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you move to 2017, it's the same thing. UCF, Washington, Miami, Penn State, USC would have had a seat at the table at this point. Auburn, Wisconsin, Alabama. Uh, you're moving on and on and on. I mean, it is really interesting to, to look at. 2016, you would have gotten Western Michigan and Colorado in this thing. Like, Think about how big that is for these brands. I mean, it's just massive to think about. Iowa would have gotten in back in. And, and yes, going to bowl games and whatnot is a big deal. But also, when you can make it into a college football playoff, this is effectively an NCAA tournament, right? There are programs in college basketball that hang banners for NCAA tournament appearances. When you are a college football program and you can say that you have been one of the top 12 in the sport, yeah, you, you get to a playoff game. It doesn't matter necessarily how it ends. Uh, will it be as great as winning a bowl game? No. If you get trashed in the first round of the playoff, yeah, that's going to suck. But uh, it's still a big, shiny thing to put in your stadium to help you recruit, to help your fan base believe that there's hope, etc. Right? It's, it's a huge, huge deal. So uh, go over to CBS Sports. Take a look at uh, at their articles on it. Go read Ross Dellinger stuff, etc. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.